Empire. Welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. My name is Guy McPherson. My mission is to help trauma therapists be their incredible selves, to be human, to be real, not just a clinician. I'm a big believer in who we are is more important than what we know. And this requires cultivating authenticity, genuineness, and vulnerability, and that requires intention. You can learn more about my courses and workshops by going to the traumatherapistproject.com. That's the traumatherapistproject.com. Let's get started. All right, folks, welcome to the new year. Um, man, a lot's going on for everybody, right? A lot's going on for everybody. A lot's going on for me. I don't know if you've been following. Um, what's, what's been going on for me? But I've been, I'm not going to talk about that here so much at all, probably. I'm going to, I, I do talk about it in um, a new podcast I started called uh, The Right Now Project. Um, you can find out there. But my life has changed. Things have changed. And um, what I'm doing here has kind of slowly morphed. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how things are changing in um uh, in my business, um, with the Trauma Therapist Project, and I'm super excited about uh, what is happening. And today, uh, one of those things I want to talk about is uh, a new uh, group, support group I'm starting, which is called Open Authenticity. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, when I started this podcast, let me... Hang on one second here. Lift this microphone up. When I started this podcast, my goal, as I've talked about before, was to interview master, quote unquote, trauma therapists, right? I want to interview the big names. That was my goal at the time in order to help other therapists learn about trauma like myself when I was, when I was in graduate school. Um, I had a fear about doing the work. I specifically had a fear about hearing kids' stories, like, you know, traumatic abuse stories. And I wanted, and, and despite that, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to work in this field. I, I knew that I could help people in those moments, right? In the fire of their lives. And so I started this podcast and I was fortunate enough at the time to be in a consultation group with, with Janina Fisher and she came on the podcast and I think her, I don't think, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that, her, I mean, she's a world renowned, uh, figure in the field and, and her name enabled me to help me get other people on the podcast. But well, and one of the questions I would always ask was, and to this day still do, but it's a good one. It, you know, when I had a list of questions that I asked every, everybody, and I think I hid behind that, um, because I didn't want to go off script, you know, I, so, but one of the questions was, can you share an early clinical error and what you learned from that? Now, I thought I was going to get all of these responses that had to do with, um, you know, well, this intervention didn't work, and I was going to use that intervention and that technique and IFS this and somatic experiencing that and focusing and uh, all these other things, but no. What I got instead was person, guest after guest after guest, sharing how they were not being themselves in the moment, that they were scared to be themselves in the moment, that they weren't allowing themselves to be who they were in that moment. And instead, they thought they had to maintain some air of professionalism or they they thought that showing their feelings would get in the way of what quote unquote needed to be done now look 
of course, ethics have to be followed and rules have to be followed to a certain degree and client safety and all that stuff. Yes, 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 yes. But what guest after guest after guest was sharing was that they were missing a huge vital component of the work, which was allowing themselves to be in the moment, to be a human being and, and, and to supply the, the, the nutrients of the therapeutic relationship. And I would hear this over and over and over again. And this was really resonating with me because I was doing the same thing. You know, I, I, when I got into graduate school, I, I felt that uh, in order for me to become the best trauma therapist I thought I could become was to gain all this knowledge. And yes, you have to have all this knowledge. You have to have knowledge. But I neglected how important I, as a person, me, Guy, was in that equation, in a sense. Yes, of course, I knew about genuineness and, and authenticity, but I didn't realize really what that meant and how that played into the role it played within the dynamics, especially of working with someone who'd been impacted by trauma. The other part of this was that I, I feel that I was using this thirst and pursuit of knowledge to cover up certain parts of myself that I felt were inadequate or certain parts of myself that I uh, were, were, weren't perfect, my imperfections, my idiosyncrasies in a sense. But man, look, it's, it's those things that make us friggin' unique. It's those things, and we all have them, right, that make us individuals. It's those things, those so-called imperfections, which make us relatable, that make us real, that make us human beings. I mean, th you know, there's, there's a, an automatic, immediate power imbalance within the therapeutic relationship, right? That therapist is kind of up here, uh, the, the client is down here slightly. Why? Because the therapist has all this knowledge, maybe has degrees and this and that and that. The client's coming to them for quote unquote help, for a cure, for a fix, to get out of pain, to be better, on and on and on and on. And when I realized that us being who we are, the ability of ourselves to be who we are, to allow ourselves just to be. I would interview people on the podcast who, and I, always I interview on the people on the podcast, who just exude a, a, a genuineness and authenticity. And what is that, right? We would talk so much about that, but it, 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 it's so, when we meet people, <clears throat> excuse me, when we meet someone who is just content with themselves, with who they are, they are not just content, they're, they're happy, they're beaming perhaps, they're, uh, nothing has to be ch changed or fixed or adjusted, they're just themselves, we are you know, they're not trying to hide or uh, smooth over the the the, 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 the crags and the gnarls in, in their being. In fact, those things are beautiful, right? We are drawn to them. We are, I know myself, I'm like, whoa. And that allows me, that inspires me to look at who I am. And look at what I'm covering up in myself, what I'm maybe not proud of or even ashamed of. And maybe go back and look into the story of my life and, um, uh, and my own traumas and how, uh, you know, I've, I've, 
adapted and, and the negative loops that are spinning on in my head, my negative self-talk. But when we find, when we encounter people who are able to be themselves, you know, in the moment, and whether that be professionally, whether we're talking about a therapist here, and, 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 and that ability is, that has to be there, right? as a therapist um, because it's not a matter of, you know, if you're going to get triggered, but when, right. And to have done that inner work, that inner exploration before you walked into that office with that client is mandatory, right? You've got to do that. But this doesn't just help us with our professional lives. It helps us with our personal lives also. And this pursuit, this quest, this, this topic <clears throat> has, you know, began to really make me think about, you know, what does it mean to be authentic? We talk about that in this field of mental health a lot. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Um, my chocolate croissant is getting stuck in my throat. I'm just get a sip of coffee here. Talk a lot about that in this field, and I began asking myself, okay, what does that mean specifically? What? Do, how do I do that? What does that mean to be more genuine? What do I need to do? And it it makes me think of a time that was pretty momentous for myself. And it was when I was several years ago when I was working in a clinic in Northern California and we were assessing and treating young kids who were showing early signs of psychosis. And as part of that, uh, we had to provide an assessment. We would work in teams. I was working with a colleague and we would give this assessment. It was literally 40 pages long. And you'd you know, ask the kid, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kid, these questions. And I remember I was working with a colleague of mine and we were working with this young kid. It must have been about 14 or so. And I was leading this particular assessment, you know, doing my best to be casual and asking these questions. And it just wasn't work. It wasn't, we weren't getting anywhere. You know, the, 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 the kid wasn't responding. He was very, you know, yes, no, uh, you know, monosyllabic and it just wasn't working. And, I, 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 I thought to myself, you know, what is going on here? I, why can't I, why can't I connect with this kid? So what I did was I took the, this, 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 uh, assessment and I just put it down on the desk Whoosh! Didn't slam it down, but I just put it down. And I said, look, forget this, forget the assessment. Let me ask you a question. What is it? Okay. Your parents are outside. What is it? They're in the waiting room. What is it that they're not getting, that they're not seeing, that they need to see? What is it that your teacher is not getting? What do they need to get? What are they not hearing? What is it that the other therapists you've seen before you've come here, what are they not getting? What do they need to hear? To share, share that with me right now. And in that moment, right, I... I I dispensed with the formality and I was real with this kid and that whole thing, that whole dynamic, sh that whole act shifted, the act of putting down that, that, that assessment shifted the, the dynamic in the room and it also shifted the dynamic within myself about how to connect with people, you know, and we went on to get a lot of information and, and help this kid out. And that really helped me. And I remember that when I started doing this podcast and I started hearing from other guests about inadvertently the importance of, 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 uh, you know, allowing themselves to be themselves. And why is that hard? Why is that a challenge for a lot of us? Right? Because a lot of us who get into this field get in because we want to quote unquote fix and help 
and take away the pain from others. Uh, uh, all the best intentions. But it also means that way, wait, 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 you're asking me to look at myself. I, that's okay. I'm not ready to do that. You know, I want to help this person. But it also requires that you as a therapist or a coach have to have that inner exploration dialed in. You know, it's not enough that, in my opinion, just to want to do this work. With this work, and I say this work as a therapist, and I think especially with someone who's dealing in, tr- in the field of trauma, comes a certain responsibility. And that is that you look at your own traumas, do that inner exploration. And this whole topic of, you know, what does it mean to be authentic? What, what, what do I need to do? Like, tell me <laughs> what is required. Well, well, I'll tell you, what's required is an intentionality, a commitment, a practice to, as I said, looking at, you know, the story of our lives that we've told ourselves and then perhaps that others have told us or led us to believe. Our belief systems, our values, our fears, our biases, how we're relating, uh, and of course all those things impact right? How we relate to not just our clients, but the people in our lives. And this is what I wanted to do. So you th- with, and this is what I wanted to do with creating open authenticity with this group. And I'll talk more about the details, but you know, and you throw all that within the context of my life and the the kind of drastic shift that has been happening in my life in this past six months, um, which actually now coincides with the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, and how I want to move forward. Um, I get so inspired, you know, day to day on my podcast when I talk to people who are just have committed themselves to helping other people. And you'll, you'll, you'll know, and I don't know if you can be surprised or not, but my podcast really isn't so much about trauma, but it's about the amazing guests I have on my podcast and how I get in there and find out how the heck did you get into this amazing field and how are you doing this incredible work you're doing? And I want to get in and get those details because those details are the, 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 like the burning sun, the emanating and vibrant sun of our, our soul, of that person's soul, of our gut. And I want to find that within myself. I'm tired of not trusting myself. I've talked a lot about this. You know, there are a lot of things that I want to uh, challenge myself with to be a better person. A lot of things that I want to improve about myself. And Open Authenticity is a group that I'm starting in February. It's a support group that's going to meet every other week. And it's going to be a small group. But we are going to work on ourselves. It's not therapy, but it's for people who are interested in challenging challenging themselves to be more authentic and what, whatever that is going to mean for you. That might mean honoring uh, your passions, honoring your strengths. It might mean for the first time in your life, standing up for yourself and being more um, assertive in perhaps pursuing a creative endeavor. It might be learning how to communicate better, okay, and honoring and and being able to speak from your soul, your heart, your core. For me, it means learning how to trust my gut and not letting it be, be covered and clouded by other people's needs or wants or not letting that be clouded by how I think I'm going to be perceived by others. 
when we get in touch with our strengths and who we are, right? And really get in touch with that. And that means looking at our past and looking at, why is that important? Because it impacts a lot of our belief systems and values and how we think about ourselves and our self-esteem and our the inner voices we all have in our head, that whether they're positive or negative loops, you know. The, the, the degree to which we're able to be aware of that and then control that and and own that will reflect on our ability to tap into our own self, our own uniqueness. And man, that is amazing when we're able to honor that. So open authenticity is for people who want to make improvements in themselves, who want to step up and claim the, the, themselves. Finally, it's about being willing to do the work, right, with others, right? This is going to be a group where we're going to support each other. We're going to encourage each other. We're going to hold each other accountable. And when you're finding people, when you're in a group with people who are on this path or on the same path, who are holding you accountable, who are not, not judging you, but encouraging you and inspiring you, you are on fire. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm really good at, okay, creating groups and facilitating groups and getting in there and managing the balance of the groups. This is what I love to do. This is what I love to do. So if this is inspiring you at all, if you want to learn more about this, head on over to openauthenticity.com. That's openauthenticity.com and you can learn more. But folks, I'm telling you, the ability for us to be ourselves, okay? The ability for you to honor your uniqueness, to honor even your, so I'm doing air quotes here, your imperfections, your so-called imperfections, your eccentricities even, your ability to express that and be that and to live that allows others to connect with you. It allows your clients to connect with you, to relate to you. That forges the therapeutic relationship. It provides the nutrients of the therapeutic relationship. Okay? And that is undeniably powerful. And I'll tell you something. This emphasis is where this mental health field is going, in my belief. It's not so much in accumulating all these certificates and degrees and workshops. And yes, you've got to have a certain body of knowledge. But to be, you know, a, 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 a human being, I mean, that sounds so simple, but to be genuine, to be real, to be yourself is the ultimate vital intervention. All right, so if you want to join me, get in more information on this, love to have you on board. It's openauthenticity.com. Thank you for being here. I wish you an incredible, powerful, healthy, and inspiring new year. Take care.